questions. 24 and 25. So I've got uh, a table here. It says for uh, line H, a table is shown three values of X and their corresponding values of Y. So this is H of X. Okay, plug it in these X values and out come these Y values right here. Uh, line K is the result of translating H down five units. So K of X is equal to H of X, but translated down five units would be like this, minus five on the outside. What's the x-intercept of k here? So we got to figure out what h is first. And then once we know h, we can translate it down five units. Well, thank goodness, they've given us uh, plenty of points here. And um, they tell us this is a line. And so we know it's going to be linear. And so these lines, of course, have slope to them. So we can calculate the slope of this line. Now, it should not matter which pair we use, so I'm just going to show you that. To find slope, remember, it is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So these points here, if I want to kind of set it up so you can see it, this would be like my x1 and y1, and this would be x2 and y2. And so I could go 160 minus 130 over 23 minus 18, giving me 30 over 5, or a slope of 6. I'm also going to do it, though, with this other pair. I'll call it this time, this one y2, and this one y1, and this x2, and this one x1. So that slope would be 178 minus 160 over 26 minus 23. And it gives me 18 over 3, which also gives me 6. So the point is, this is data that makes a line. Okay, this is a, another line, but it's going to be shifted down, or k of x is another line, but it's going to be shifted down by five units. But anyway, we can find the equation of this line, especially now that I know its slope is six, and I didn't have to calculate it twice. I just wanted to show it didn't matter which pair it was. But now I know this. My equation of my line, let's call it h of x, has this form, mx plus b, because it's a line, and I already know what m is, because we just calculated it. So I just need to find the y-intercept of that line. And luckily, I've got lots of points to choose from. I can pick any point here. I'm going to use the 18 and the 130 again. I'm going to say, hey, h of x, the y value is 130, when the x value is 18. And I don't know what b is, but I'm going to find out what b is now. So this is 130 equals 106 times 8 is 48 here. Yeah, 108 plus B. And I'll just subtract this 108. 3, 2, borrow. That's a 2, 22. B is 22. And so there's what H of X is. H of X is MX plus B, 6X plus 22. And k of x is h of x take away 5, because it's translated down by 5. And that means k of x is 6x plus 17. And now that we know k of x, we can answer the question. The question is, what's the x-intercept? So if you think about a graph, when you cross the x-axis, like this purple points on the x-axis right here, you always know what the y value is. The y value has to be zero because it's not up or down on the y-axis. And that's what your k of x represents. So you're really trying to solve when is the y value zero like this. And you can see that's going to require us to do a little subtraction. Move the 17 to the other side. You could have moved your 6x, I suppose. Do it fine, and then divide by 6. And so however you end up solving it, that little linear equation, you end up with x equals negative 17 over 6. It looks like that is this one right here. Um, kind of a tough problem. I'm going to show you real quick on Desmos how you could do that. So I could make a table really quick. 
And I'm going to change this to X's and Y's. And not X's and Y's. I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here. Yeah. Let me think here. Yeah, X's and Y's should work, I think. Let's give it that little part right there. There we go. X's and Y's. And we'll just enter these ordered pairs. So I've got 18, uh, 23, and 160. And then I gotta get them partnered up here. So 18 goes with 130, 23 goes with 160, and 126, or rather, not sure how I got out there. 26 goes with 178. So we'll get that correct here. 26 tab goes with 178. And so I'm gonna hit this little home or this little plus sign button here, and that'll show me my points right there. And you can see they form a line. And remember, Desmos can find these lines. So I can type y uh, is approximately equal to, and I go a. I can go mx. I think mx plus b. No, it might like ax plus b like that. Y equals. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Maybe I do have to use y sub 1 and x sub 1 just because x and y are kind of special characters. And a y is our x sub 1 here. There we go. Yeah, x and y are special characters, so you have to use subscripts there. But you can see this calculates the line. It says, hey, your line ax plus b is a with 6 and b with 22. And so I've got that. That's this equation we found right here, 6x plus 22. So if you have data points and you know they're on a line, you can do a regression just like I did here. And then I could even ask my calculator. I could say, hey, that's what uh, h of x is. h of x is... 6x plus 22. I could say k of x is h of x. Take away how much? 5. I think they wanted it 5 lower. And there's h of x right there. And then h of x is the red one. So I could trace this thing down and I could just look and see where it crossed my x axis. I'm going to hit the home button and I'd say, hey, where do you cross the x axis at? And it's going to tell me, hey, I cross at negative. 2.833. Well, I have a guess that negative 17 divided by 6, negative 2.833, that was our answer, negative 17 over 6, that's that decimal right there. So here we did it all with Desmos, just knowing how to find a linear regression. Alrighty, that was way more information than you wanted. And finally, our last one in this little group, our second one. <laughs> In the xy plane, the graph of the equation y equals x squared negative x squared, so it's upside down parabola right here, intersects the line y equals c at exactly one point. That's not much to go on. What is the value of c? Uh, here's what this, you know, at first I don't know what they're talking about, but here's a big clue. It intersects this line y equals c at one point. Now, we're used to parabolas and saying, hey, where does the parabola cross the x-axis at? And we said, you know, sometimes it crosses it twice, and sometimes it just hits it one time and turns away. And that's what's happening here, but it's not the x-axis that it's hitting once. It's the line y equals c that it's hitting at exactly one point. So I'm going to draw a line on my x and y axis here. This is x, this is y, and I want the line to have the value at c here. So... It's y equals c. There he is, a horizontal line. And this parabola that they gave us opens upside down and only hits it once. So I don't know where it hits it at. I'm going to make up a point right there. But it only hits it once and opens upside down. So it has to be this type of situation. Now that parabola, maybe it's down here somewhere. Maybe it's up here. I don't know where this purple line is. All I know is y equals c. Okay. And so basically, I'm just trying to figure out, hey, what's the uh, what's the value of C here? So what is this line, or what's the Y value of this red point, my vertex of the parabola? So essentially, this is find the vertex of the parabola. And whatever its Y value is, that's what this line Y equals C is. So let's find this guy's vertex. We've got two choices here, okay? 
uh, we got y equals or f of x equals, it's a function, so we could use f of x if we wanted to. So we got two ways. We can complete the square on it, or the vertex of a parabola is at negative b over 2a comma f of negative b over 2a. So we could also use the formula here, find the x value of this point, and then plug that number into the equation, this equation right here, to find out the y value. So if you tell me the x, I can plug it in and find the y value. So we have two choices. I'm going to complete the square real quick, then I'll do it this way, and you can see them both. Decide which way you like better. For those of you in regular algebra, um, you will have not got to see how to complete the square before. So you know what I'll do? I'll do the purple method. Oh, shoot. No. Crud, I forget about my Desmos all the time. Sorry, you guys. I wouldn't do it this way at all. I'd run my Desmos. I'd type in this equation. Y equals negative X quantity squared plus 9X minus 100. Now I'd say, where are you at? I'd hit my home button if I could, but they don't show me a home button. My parabola must be somewhere here. There he is, down there. Hey, where's his vertex at? I'm going to zoom in now that I know where he's at. There's his vertex. 4.5, so I know this guy. 4.5 comma negative 79.75. There's his y value. That's this line right there. Okay, um, so it's one of these decimals. Well, it's, let's see here. It's got to be negative, so it's not this one. 4 goes into 4 one time, so this is over 100 right here. See, that's negative 100. That's not negative 79. That's negative. It's got to be this guy. So let's type him in and see what decimal he is. 319. It's negative. I know that. Divided by 4. Holy cow. 79.75 and it'll be negative. We're done. Way easier than what I was going to do. I always forget about Desmos and you'll get to use it all the time. So if you need to find a vertex, graph the thing. There we go. That was easy enough. 